Everybody, hi, my name's Kate, and this is my lovely client, Kat, that I need to introduce you to. I've just finished working with Kat for a couple of months. Kat's actually a counsellor extraordinaire. And I met Kat through a client of mine who's a personal trainer, and she's got a personal training business, and they're friends, and they exchange services together. Um, I'm going to let Kat tell the story because Kat overcomes overcomes a lot with a smiling face she's like this gentle smiling assassin at the same time builds a business and at the same time graciously cares for people and at the same time is building a reputation in her local area as well as online she's launched multiple things online um, she's gotten very busy with her one-on-one -on -one consultations um, she's also a very busy mother and partner and did a lot of what I'm talking about over the pandemic period, but she's in Sydney at the moment. So they're out of that. And she's just moved into her own beautiful office of which there was, you know, some interesting things go on and some teething problems, et cetera. But I want her to tell you the story. Kat, um, can you basically tell us what, what it is that you do? How do you help people? What's your business about? So I'm a counsellor, um, so I do counselling and mental wellness. Um, so essentially, I guess I do a little bit of listening to people. I do a little bit of building, um, I guess, a bit of a care plan with people, providing strategies, providing tools, um, and just generally supporting people with being able to be the best version of themselves. Uh, so I work with a whole range of things from um, anxiety and depression to just goal building. Um, and I also do a lot of NDIS work as well. So I work with um, quite a few NDIS participants. So then that is completely different in itself. We do a lot of work around boundaries, assertiveness skills, um, and a lot of just life skills and social skills that sometimes people with a disability might struggle with. Um, I've also been running um, some groups around mindfulness and meditation. So that's something that I really love to do. Um, I've done some retreats for NDIS as well. Uh, so I guess I've got my finger in a few little pies at the moment, but all of it kind of fits within the mental health um, kind of arena. Yeah, and it keeps her satisfied, guys. So I guess what I'm hoping you as a viewer can get out of this is maybe some goodness to take away to know that however you'd like your business to be one day, that it is actually possible. And Kat and I were just talking before we came on here and when she had a goal when we first, before we started working together actually, and it was that one day maybe she'd have a wellness center and et cetera. And, but it was a 10, 10 year goal. Mm. Um, and I remember when we met, she said, well, what, what does a business coach even do? And one of the ways that I explained it was, well, it's like going from A to Z, but not really taking 26 letters to get there or like to get through the alphabet quite a lot faster than you would go through ABCD. A, and now that you're even in your own premises, <laughs> but then there was a pause to do with that as well. You realised, oh, actually, hang on a second. You're a lot closer, a lot closer than 10 years. And guys along the way, and this will probably come out in the story as well, is her husband um, started working with her to support her in the middle of homeschooling kids slash they're a great team, obviously, and work really well together. Um, what would you say made you even think about having a business coach? Because I know it wasn't like a, a premeditated thing you were thinking about for a really long time or anything, was it? It was more like, oh, this is, sounds like a good adventure. I might take this on. Yeah, absolutely. And that's pretty much how I work with everything. So things just pop up and I kind of go, oh, yeah, I'll go in that direction. That seems good at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially I was um, working with Nikki. Nikki was my personal trainer. Um, and she had mentioned a few times having a business coach and how that had helped her. So when I started my business, um, I started in January this year. And um, I, you know, I was just sort of kind of doing it how I thought you needed to do it and trying to get myself out there and things like that. Um, and I heard Nikki talk about how nice it was to have a business coach and some of the things that she got from it. So I just sort of thought, oh, well, that seems like a bit of a logical sense. If, you know, I've started a business and it's my first business, then obviously if, if there's somebody that might know some different ways or better ways to be able to do things, then that would be the person I would talk to. Um, yeah, so I just contacted Nikki and said, you know, I hear you talk about your business coach all the time. I want in on that. So like, let me know what I can do. And yeah, so she teed us up to have a chat. Um, and I guess I just 
I get, I just went with the feeling. So after our first conversation, I got a good feeling and I thought, actually, I think that I can really benefit from this. This sounds like something that, you know, is going to be really helpful and it's a bunch of stuff that I don't know. So, you know, why not go to the person that does know it and learn what I can learn? Mm-hmm. Um, guys, I have to say too, because I have an, an ethos of, unless I'm running a beginner's course, I only take people on that are experienced because, Kat wasn't learning her trade. She'd set up her ABN to start by herself, but you have how many years industry experience already? Yeah, so I've been in disabilities and mental health uh, for probably about six years. Yeah, so she was able to capitalise not only on that network, but she knows her trade very well. So it wasn't about, because building the business, I think is very different to learning the trade. I do think from an ethical perspective, people really need to know their trade first as a principle, then to worry about, you know, extra bells and whistles, which the bells and whistles, I will point out as well as, as Kat, when she tells you her story, but they're really individual for everybody. Kat's flavor is very, um, very unique in that she's got a very dry sense of humor and she's actually very funny and one of the things that she was separating when we started was she'd have her personal profile over here and be quite funny with the memes but then not put it on a business page because she thought that that was unprofessional and it probably would be deemed as unprofessional in the um traditional sense but can we talk about that for a sec because as soon as that was opened up and you started getting more comfortable to share both in both places it opened up the floodgates really yeah, absolutely. I yeah, I do have a bit of a dry sense of humour, but it was definitely I was keep, keep really keeping that separate. And even um, I guess it was really interesting because when I was having face to face like sessions with clients, um, I was kind of more myself, and you know I was quite dressed down and things like that. Um, and people were expecting something different. So people were expecting someone who was you know, so sort of quite put together and, you know, in a bit of a business suit. And I would have these sessions with people on the beach and they would be like, oh, you're going to go to the beach. And I'm like, yeah, of course I go to the beach. Um, And so when they would see me and I would be literally dressed in like, you know, sort of ripped jeans and a shirt and that was it. Because the sessions are walking, guys. A lot of her sessions were walking at the time before she got to the studio. Um, Yeah, a lot of people were kind of like, oh, so you're actually not like that. And that's what people like. So I guess I started to think, oh, why am I kind of trying to be this different person for my business when essentially I want to attract my people? I'm not going to be able to attract my people if I'm not even being myself. And when I did start to put more of my personality into my business, um, yeah, it was really different. I got so much, you know, so much from people. I got so many responses where they were like, wow, you're really actually down to earth and you're actually really funny. Um, And even when I opened up my office, I, you know, my goal for my office was to be non-clinical. So it is kind of like a little lounge room and people, you know, love that. My clients will often ask to come to the office now outside of like a walk and talk because they, they feel so comfortable in the space and it's such a nice space. Um, I mean, I don't wear shoes. So often when people come and see me for the first time, they will walk into the office and I go and answer the door and I've got no shoes on and you can kind of see the eyes go down and I have to say, Listen, if, you don't, if you want to take your shoes off, whack them off because as soon as I get into the office, my shoes come off. Um, and, you know, it's funny because people that you kind of initially go, oh, by the second session, they're walking in with thongs on, whacking them off at the front door and then coming in and they're so comfortable. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been such a beautiful transition for me to be able to allow like my two parts to meld and to blend. Kat, if you haven't done that as a post already, barefoot counsellor. Yes, I think I have put it in there. <laughs> I haven't seen it. it yeah. that, that's hilarious. I was only just talking to someone last night and the group of people said, you should walk on the grass more, take your shoes off. Anyway, it seems to be the theme for the last 24 hours. Yeah. So it yep. wasn't like you were at a rock bottom or anything. You just thought, well, this will be a fun journey. Yeah. <laughs> you hadn't yeah, actually just... looked for any other help, had you either? No, no. I had just progressed to the point where I knew I wanted to be in private practice. Um, and I just kind of went, well, I know what I'm doing, but I've never run a business before. So I guess for me, it made sense to seek out advice from somebody who had that knowledge Mm. rather than just you know try to fumble my way through until I got to rock bottom like I would not you know I don't want to get to rock bottom before I say 
oh my God, please somebody help me. I don't know what I'm doing. And that's what I tell my clients as well is to look after your mental health before you get to that point where you feel like you're broken and it's much harder to reach out and get help. So I guess I was taking my own advice in a way. It's such a good point, isn't it, actually? I've actually never thought of it like that. Because usually people, especially coaches that I speak to, they've been trying for a while and yeah. there's that angst. They're like, okay, finally I need help, yeah. blah, blah. But obviously you're different. You know, you're not a personal trainer, but the genius is there. The Part of the genius is your humour. Part of your other genius is your personality and your passion is you really like people. Um, you know, you're loving your group stuff, but you love your one-on-one stuff. At the same time, you've been great on social media. You've got quite a few very loyal followers as well. Yeah. <laughs> were you ske- were you skeptical or worried about the coaching process at all? Um, I don't think so because I'm. Uh, I guess I'm just pre- I'm pretty open minded. I mean, you have to be in what I do. Mm. You really have to go into things with, I guess, kind of a clear mind and no preconceived ideas. Because if there's one thing I've learned, it's that what you think you're going to get from somebody is never it's never what comes out. Um, So I think just going into it with a bit of a trusting open mind. And I guess I'm very much take what you need and then leave something behind. So if there was things that we did together um, that, you know, I sort of thought, oh, I don't know how I'm going to be able to swing that in a counselling way. I would just go away, kind of roll it around in my head for a day or two. And then generally I would come back and be like, okay, yeah, now I can see how I can make that work. So I guess it's being open-minded to even what you're getting given and going, all right, how am I going to roll this around until it sits like where it needs to for me? Mm. And I have to say, guys, it wasn't, and it's, you know, full kudos to Kat because it's, there's nothing easy about escalating things five to 10 years along the timeline and doing it in three months. There's nothing easy at all. There's definitely been meltdowns. It's just that, she's taken it on the chin like a proper business person and made decisions quite quickly without letting it affect her self-esteem and self-worth and all that. So, you know, full kudos to you. But one of the things that I thought was just gorgeous and kind of funny and cute when we started was that she thought she was going to buy, Kat thought she was going to buy a house and had to buy a house before she did a retreat in the house. And that was one of our first things that we talked about in the conversation. I thought, well, have you thought about renting? maybe yeah yeah and now she's done multiple retreats yes she's also had retreats that didn't sell so she mm-hmm. scrapped them and it's not a big deal and she moved on and the rest are sell outs and she's got meditation courses and she's full of one-on-ones or as full as she wants to get or can get at the moment and yeah. she's looking at the next project um but in terms of can you tell us a little bit about the story about the studio where you are and maybe the goals and the timeline because I think that's inspiring for people because things don't go in a straight line yeah so I guess one of the biggest things was when I went well actually not even when I went into my business when I started counseling so when I looked like actually went to uni so my first year of counseling at uni um we would go to these workshops and people would say, okay, so what's your plan? Like, what's your long-term goal? Why are you doing counselling? And I always had this same, the same goal about wanting to have a wellness retreat, like a hub. So my end result was I wanted to have some sort of big type of hub where there was multiple things happening there. So I would be doing counselling. I would have like a match path, a massage therapist, all of these beautiful things where someone, it was almost like a one-stop mental mental wellness shop where you could go in for the day, you could have a counselling session, go and get a massage after it, go and get some Reiki and then walk out, you know, just feeling completely, you know, mentally, energetically invigorated. And so for me, that was my 10-year goal. I always used to say, that's my 10-year goal. So that'll be in 10 years' time. Um, And even the idea of having my own office was, well, that'll be in a couple of years. So everything was always a couple of years away. Um, And I don't even know where those numbers came from. It was just how I was running. I just sort of thought, well, it will probably take that long to be able to reach that. Um, And so obviously, I started doing, you know, the coaching and things were starting to happen quite quickly. I was getting you know, much more present on my social media and starting to reach out to people around me. Um, 
And so it started to develop quicker than what I thought. So I got to the space where I was like, actually, do you know what? I think I'm actually going to be able to get an office. So even that was brought forward like quite quickly. Um, so I, it took a little while to find a space and then I found a space and had to do quite a bit of work to it to get it to where I wanted it to be. Um, so I've been in my space now for probably about three months. Um, so I walked in on Monday, just gone. We had had huge rains over the weekend on the South Coast. Um, and there was just water that it was running down my wall, like a little waterfall through the, the ceiling, um, down my brick wall and had flowed out like all over my carpet, my lounge, my rug, all of these things. And of course I had just like a moment where I stood there and thought, oh my God. Um, and then I, you know, had clients that day. So I instantly went into, okay, how am I going to organize this? Um, and it was pretty stressful. Like there was a few days where I was just like, oh, this is too much. Like, you know, what am I going to do? I don't think I want an office anymore. So yeah, absolutely. I had that meltdown where I just went, oh, I, I just can't even process this at the moment. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing that came out of it was that this morning I was sitting in here and I was chatting to my husband about it. And I, it reminded me of what my end goal was. And I was like, well, I'm getting really stressed out about this office, but this is such a short term thing for me. I, I want my, I want my wellness hub. So now I get to see that my wellness hub isn't 10 years away. Like I originally thought I kind of went, Oh, I'm okay with this. I can live with this because this is short term. And, you know, I guess this is still a space that it's still completely usable. I had my ladies in here for their meditation group this morning and they all commented about how beautiful the space was and how comfortable it was and how, you know, it has this really nice energy. Um, so it, it's, you know, still the same space that it was, but it really gave me pause to be like, well, why am I being so stressed about a space that's short term when actually what I wanted was a wellness hub? And, and it reminded me that that's what I really wanted at the start of this whole journey. And it's actually possible. More than possible, actually. She'll rock it. Can you, obviously the space feels good, Kat, because it's you. It's not because you like that blue color, although I know you love that blue color. <laughs> it's very yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, and it, it's great branding, etc. But guys, can you see how it's it's all about a feel? It's definitely not to do with your branding. If anything, we undid Kat undid some of her branding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I rebranded myself to be, you know, a shoes off, chilled out, take a seat, sit where you want. And I guess that was really different for people as well. I did a post where um, I did a video where I talked about, you know, that when you come in, there's a two-seater lounge and a one-seater lounge, but they're not actually designated. Like we kind of have that perception where we have to sit on one and the counsellor sits over on the one-seater. I do probably, you know, there's probably half and half where I will spread out on the two-seater lounge and my client decides that they're more comfortable sitting on the one-seater. So I, I really, I guess, put it out there that I was not in that same mold. I'm very different. I've done a lot of sessions on the floor. I work with kids. Kids don't want to sit on a seat. So we get the toys down and we sit on the floor with them and that's where we do the session. So, yeah, I guess it was really helpful to get that out there so people didn't have to come here to see that. They actually got to hear that and that was what drew them in. Amazing. And... The other thing that I like that you share a lot, which coaches are often scared to share, are, you know, just real things about you as a person, you know, slide insecurities, vulnerabilities, things that you've overcome yourself. It's, um, you know, and you can hear there's just no hold, no bars, no, no bars hold, no holds barred, no holds barred. <laughs> well, I don't ever know what a hold is or what you're barring it from, but you know what I mean. Kat's just Kat and now she will be able to develop whatever she wants to develop because even just looking for the office space, the relationships that she developed while she was doing that, everything that she's doing is part of what's built her business in terms of her as a busy counsellor and the potential to do whatever she wants and now her husband's on board and can see that him helping her and I don't know what you'd call him, your VA or PA. 
Yeah, I think we were calling him my PA for a little while, but then he was sending me through fake invoices. So then I <laughs> had to fire him as a PA role because I was tired of getting the emails. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Um, I I guess where 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 is it now, and where can you see it heading? Because I'm excited for your future. Excited that you know that you can create anything that you want. I'm also secretly excited that we've turned you into a potential main breadwinner of the household as well, which is like, oh my God, that's amazing for women. I think yeah, it's important. Absolutely. So where do you see it going? I guess my wellness hub vision is back in the forefront now. So I think that in the busyness of creating, you know, my space and building up my one-on-ones and things like that, I had pushed that a little bit to the back and almost forgotten that that was there. Um, so that's definitely back at the forefront now where I'm back to going, okay, so my wellness hub is, you know, that was the direction I wanted to head and it's still the direction I'm really passionate about. And I actually have made quite a few really great connections. I, you know, I have people that are coming to my meditation circles that, also uh, like you know have connections in the community or they work somewhere in the community my retreats I've been able to make connections with people Um, so I actually am starting to really form I guess the basis of the people that I would want to be a part of my wellness hub so like definitely that's where I'm back at now I love being part of a team um, and I love the idea of having you know people that can sit around together in a lunchroom and go oh, gee, that was a bit hard or, gee, that was amazing and, you know, really be able to, you know, build that energy in each other. Um, and, and yeah, I guess that that would be the one part I miss as far as having my own, like my own space here. Um, but I guess that gives me more drive because I, I know what it feels like to have that team. So that gives me more drive to go, no, I want to be part of creating that. <laughs> I want, like, I want to be able to foster that. Yeah, on your own terms this time, not necessarily even as an employee. And I have to say, I love the face-to-face contact stuff as well. But, you know, we've had COVID for a large time of the year as well. So it just really wasn't an option. And your business was still able to run, even in the, whether it was online or face-to-face, it was still actually able to run, Um, which is, you know, luckily you're in one of those businesses. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with anybody that might be watching this that might have something that's similar to you and be worried about doing stuff or Um, any advice for people? I think that the biggest, probably the biggest advice and the biggest growth moment for me um, was really that, that being authentic to actually who you are. So, you know, you don't have to make a business based on you, what you think a business person is supposed to look like. Um, but I guess being able to come to that realisation that people are coming to see me, they're not coming to see my business. So people aren't coming and then looking at my, like my my tile, my carpet tiles now, they're a bit stained from the flood and going, oh, well, I don't want to talk to her because her carpet tiles are stained. Um, they're actually still 100% comfortable to come here because they were coming to see me, not to see my carpet tiles. Um, or they're, you know, happy to see me at their home or doing a walk and talk when the office was out of action because they essentially wanted to talk to me. It wasn't the space that they needed to come to. Um, So I think that was very empowering. And, it, it, you know, that was even when things didn't work and I tried to, you know, maybe do a a workshop where I couldn't get anybody in or I had a retreat where I had to cancel it. um, There was always something that was going amazingly. So when I had a retreat that wasn't, you know, didn't sell and I went, well, I'm going to wipe that one. I was still doing a retreat the month after that was completely booked. So there was always kind of a trade-off where I was like, well, maybe that's just not my direction at the moment. So then I focused back on the direction that seems to be like sitting well and comfortable um, and I guess running with the gut a little bit. Well, actually feeling a little bit uncomfortable about this. Um, And there was a direct correlation between the stuff that I was maybe not sure about and whether it actually got people in. Because if, there, if I was running something and I was like a little bit like, oh, I don't really know, guaranteed they were the things that nobody wanted to come to, nobody booked in for, and I wiped. But the things that I would be doing that where I was like, oh, actually, I can't wait to do this. This is so down my alley and I love the idea of it. They were the things that people just like jumped into and I just was, was like running out of seats for. Yeah, because you can't not teach it. Yeah, 100%. And you would do it whether people came or they didn't come. And yeah. 
as a coach, we love helping people anyway. And no matter what the money situation is, I'd love people to get from this that do the thing because you love the thing anyway and that your marketing gets to fit in with that because you're an individual and your passion and whatever your targets are get to fit in with that as well rather than changing it and thinking that because social media or because business has to be done whatever way that we need to run on statistics and stuff and don't get me wrong we have tracked sales and she's tracked things as she goes because you have to implement that stuff or it's just a hobby Mm -hmm. um however it's she's doing the thing and she would do the thing for free anyway yeah like I would have these conversations with people anyway I would yeah, be absolutely. taking the clients for I would be doing it anyway as as would you we love the stuff that just happens to be a payment there and yep. it's so empowering I hope so many women can listen to this and go well I am actually able to receive a transaction of money for helping people and that they're good at it and that they can wear their heart on their sleeve while they do it in fact they should it works better yeah and you know what the fear of um, the pricing, because I know that was one of the big things for us. I think it was only like the second time that we had caught up and you were like, well, your pricing is not really reflective of like, you know, how long you've been doing it for and stuff like that. You probably need to think about upping your pricing. And I was terrified by that. Like at that stage, I thought, wow, if I like put my prices up, no one will come to see me. So again, it was that mindset of people aren't coming to see me because I charge cheap prices. People are coming to see me because they want to see me. Because when I put my prices up, nobody said a word. Like there was no questions. There was nothing. Like life just continued on like it normally was, except I was charging like 20, what I think it was $15 more an hour than I was previous, like the previous week. And people were fine with it. They was they just wanted to see me. They didn't care about changes. And I guess there's a confidence in I'm willing to pay that because of the relationship that we've developed and I'm confident mm-hmm. in what you do. So I had to yeah. be that confident as well. Yeah. Or take that you, you trust actually. Yeah. You, do. yeah. you trust and you took a step, even though you don't know. Now you've got evidence to look back and go, Oh, well look, see. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's absolutely. always easy. What does Steve Jobs say? It's always easy to join the dots when you look backwards, but yeah, not so easy yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. So trusting so. the process. Of which everyone's process is individual too, mm-hmm. can I say. Um, please don't think that you definitely have to do business in a way that you just increase your prices. It's everyone's, if you've got any questions in regards to what you could do with your business or what maybe needs to change, please feel free to send me a message. Um, I'll probably tag Kat on the video as well. Highly recommend you watch and follow her story, follow her page, do any of her online courses because just being around her is amazing as all her face-to-face clients say. Um, Yeah. And you guys know where to contact us. Feel free to ask questions. Thank you so much again, Kat, for your time today. I hope it's inspired plenty of people. I'm sure it has. (laughs) I'm sure it has. And I have to talk to you after this as well. So don't go anywhere and I'll talk to you soon.